بله Principal sir? Yes. Yeah, so you can Hello. Yeah. You can start your video, sir. Is it okay? Yeah, yes, sir. Perfect. It's about to be 7.29, we can, uh, I guess we can start. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, on behalf of Ting College uh, English Department, I, Umid Asneem, uh, welcome you all to this pod platform. Today we, go, we have uh, Janubi Borwa Baidu with us. She is the writer of uh, renowned novels, Rebirth, New Next Door, and Undertow. And uh, her fictions have been also shortlisted. Undertow has been shortlisted for uh, the JCB uh, Pri Literary Prize 2020. Uh, so to start, first of all, I think uh, Principal Sir would like to say a few words. Welcome, ma'am, and all the participants to this session. Sir, over to you. Thank you. Umi Tasmin. It's very good evening to all of you from the share of Principal Ding Collins. And I convey my regards to all of all the participants who join here 
in this evening. The title of the webinar is Tracing a Writer's Journey in Conversation with Janobi Borua, which is being hosted by our Department of English. This is our seventh seminar, I think. And with this, I would like to welcome to this platform one of the eminent writer of English literature, Dr. Janubi Borua, who is a known person, known personality in the field of literature and short story. Before beginning this session, I would like to throw some lights and information about our college, which is located in northwest part of Nogaon district. Dhing College is a reputed institution offering three streams of undergraduate education, arts, science, and commerce with students of Nogao and its adjoining districts like Morigao and Dorong, R12 Dorong district. I am sure with this webinar, our students and esteemed participants will be highly benefited as our resource person who join us in this evening is going to share our experiences as a writer and story builder. Without further delay and wasting time, I ask our conveners to carry out this webinar and I again wish you all participants and particularly our resource person, the prime attraction of this webinar of this to webinar. start with. Thank you, thank you very much. Over to the coordinator, Mr. Ajit Sharma, who will read out a short introduction of Dr. Borua. Over to Ojit Sharma. Uh, thank you, respected principal, sir. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, I take the privilege to share with all of you a few rich introductory lines about our respected speaker, Madam this evening, Janabi Burwa. Janabi Burwa, as you all know, is an Indian writer based in Bangalore. Her debut novel, Next Door, was published by Penguin India in 2008. And uh, the collection of short stories that was long listed for the Frank O. Connor International Short Story Award. Her next novel called Rebirth, also published by Penguin India in 2010, and uh, was short listed for the Man Asian Literary Prize and the Commonwealth Writers Prize. Her third undertow, a novel was published by Penguin Random House India, Viking Books in February 2020, and it was long listed for the JCB Prize for Literature 2020. Her short fiction has been widely anthologized, and her work is part of 
after the university syllabus. Janavi Barwa studied medicine, but is not a practicing doctor. She was born in Guwahati and raised between Assam, Meghalaya, Delhi, and Manchester. Now it's over to Umi for the next proceeding. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, principal, sir. Uh, I think we can start the session, Baidu, uh, if you're ready. Yes, yes, I am. Yeah, Baidu is going to talk on her journey as a writer. She will be also providing with uh, tips for budding writers and also a little bit on publishing in India. So uh, over to you, Baidu. You can start with your journey, Baidu. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Baidu. Clear? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to start this evening by thanking all of you at Dean College for inviting me to this uh, seminar to be part of your discussion. Thank you, Principal Shri Mpiman Hajarika. Thank you, Shri Yogi Dharma. And thank you, Umay Tasmin, for, for um, coordinating and being a uh, point person for this talk. Um, as we were, as we had discussed earlier, uh, I think the point I'd like to start at is um, at the point I started my journey as a, as a writer. Um, as you know from my um, the introduction given uh, today that uh, I had trained and studied medicine. I, I trained as a medical doctor, but um, at a particular point in, in my um, uh, journey, I, I switched to writing. Uh, how this came about is, is um, a story which I think many Indian women will be familiar with. I took some time off to um, start a family to raise my young son and... Um, what I thought would be a short break became a permanent one. And um, during this time when I was at home, after many years of being in the hospital, I finally had a lot of time on my hands. And um, I read a lot. I read a lot. And my mother uh, taught English. Uh, she taught English in Handy Girls College for many years. And I think because of her interest, um, all of us children also read a lot. And um, we grew up reading, and in this, at this point, when I was at home, spending time at home, I took, uh, I started rereading again, reading a lot again. Uh, a strange thing happened when I began to read the right, uh, the works of writers, uh, for example, like Alice Munro, a Canadian writer. I suddenly felt that, um, and I had not felt this before. I suddenly felt that um, I had something I wanted to share. I, I had something I wanted to write about. I had something I wanted to put down on the written page, and. Um, this is how my, my writing journey began. I began with short stories. Um, I don't know how many of you uh, like short stories, but for me, this is one of my passions. I um, love reading them. And I think it is the next natural step that I took to start writing them. And um, I wrote by myself, for myself for a couple of years. And um, eventually in 2008, um, some of those stories I had written uh, were put together as an anthology by Penguin India. And that became that first book, the book called Next Door. Uh, this collection is um, a collection of stories that I had written largely based in Ahom. And, uh, but in a time which, um, before the current time, in a time when I was growing up. So the, a lot of the stories are based in the 70s and 80s, um, a time many of us remember, some of us younger people don't, uh, perhaps will not know, a time where there was relative... Um, peace in our land and um, things were a little different um, in our society in those days and a lot of the stories are based in that in that in that um, time period very soon after came a book called rebirth this was a very short novel my first novel after the collection of short fiction um, this again was published by penguin india in 2010 and this this is a story of um, a young mother um, who uh, comes up against certain challenges in her marriage she um, firstly had to leave her home state of her home and come to Bangalore where her husband was working. And um, when she arrives here, she finds certain unexpected challenges in, in her marriage and how she tackles them um, is the story of her journey. She is pregnant at this time. She is expecting a child and she speaks to the child. And this, uh, this, this uh, discourse with the child is, uh, is really what this whole journey is about. But that was rebirth. And after a slightly longer gap, a gap of eight, eight years or so. My new book, Undertow, the new novel, uh, came out this year in February. Undertow is um, the story of a young woman called Loya, whose mother is from a home from Guwahati, whose father is from Bangalore. Um, again, Rukmini leaves Guwahati to come to Bangalore to start a new life, again faces challenges in her marriage and her life. And um, this is a story of 
Rukmini's daughter, Loya, and the journey she makes back to our home to meet a grandfather she had never met before. Um, this is the broad um, background of the novel. And um, it deals with many themes which, which, which uh, are close to my heart. So in short, this is the story of my writing journey. I um, can't hear you here. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Now I can hear you. Now I can hear you. Yes, I lost the beginning. Sorry. Uh, ma'am, I would like to know, I, mean, I think all the participants would like to know because you are a writer who is based in Bangalore but who is writing about Assam. So uh, what are the challenges of writing about Assam or the idea of home? You know, obviously you grew up in Guwahati and in the entire Northeast. So probably we would like to know more about that. You know, the challenges and uh, the idea of home that you have carried on from Assam to Bangalore and writing the whole entire process. Um, the undertow largely deals, and as we were discussing earlier, about the theme, the idea of home and homecoming. So um, this, this is something very close to me personally because um, I have moved around a lot. In fact, uh, I uh, left a home uh, very young in school um, when I was um, standard four or five and went to Delhi, came back to our home, again left our home to come to Bangalore. So I have moved around a lot in my life. And I think when you lead such a wandering life, the idea of home, um, you tend to look at home as something very precious. You don't take it for granted. Um, and it's not just a physical home, it's not just a house that you are dislocated from, it's the place uh, that you're dislocated from, you uh, set down roots, then you are pulled out of that place, you have to set down roots again in a new place, so you don't, you don't take home for granted, I think that's what happened for me, and um, the idea of home is something um, I have explored over and over again in my fiction, in Undertow, it is one of the major themes in which um, Loya, who's uh, a child of a mixed marriage who has uh, not known one side of her family, who uh, is not at home in the other side that she has grown up in, um, wants to, she longs to find that uh, one place where she can be at home. Um, as for me, how difficult or easy was it to explore the idea of home being in Bangalore outside of a home? Um, I think it gives you a different perspective. When you um, live at home, uh, sometimes you take home for granted. Uh, when you're living with your family, you sometimes take your family for granted, right? Many of us do. It's only when we leave home, it's only when you leave your family, uh, is when you um, look at them uh, from afar with what I call a wide angle lens. And you see many things, you see um, many things you've not seen before. So um, in a way, because I've lived in Bangalore for so long, nearly 28 years now, um, I um, kind of have a foot in both places, in Assam, in a home and in Bangalore. And it gives me, I think, a very unique perspective from which to um, explore the idea of home. Um, I, I know it from the inside, so I know what um, being at home is all about. And I see it from the outside and I um, see what people from outside see of that place. So it gives me a privilege, uh, sort of a, a twin lens with which to explore home with. So um, it is a privilege in a way, I think. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, do you think uh, there are certain things about Assam or b about uh, writing from a place that you grew up about? Uh, do you think certain things need to be highlighted um, and probably ignored or, you know, projecting it in a particular way? So what are the things to be highlighted as a, you know, writer while you're writing or concentrating on a particular region? I think when you're writing a piece of fiction, um... I don't think you consciously set out to highlight anything about a place. Um, I always say, I think fiction is, um, is after all fiction. It's, it's not, a, it's not a, a, an educative text in that sense that you, know, you um, don't want to um, know the facts of a place. You don't want to know the geography, the number of rivers, the kind of climate. You know, it's not that sort of uh, highlighting. Uh, I think for any writer, it's just very subconscious. Um, when you write from a place, of a place, uh, the things that um, are dear to you, the things that appeal to you, the things that uh, you notice, you observe, what you absorb are naturally going to come out on the written page. So for me, it's, it's more of an unconscious um, act. It's more of a, 
very normal transition. It's it's not um, something that I think through or I um, plan to. But uh, you know, you're writing a story about um, uh, an, a grandfather and a granddaughter based in Guwahati. I mean, everything natural about the setting just um, comes to the surface, right? I don't really have to plan it or um, uh, you know, put too much um, effort into it. So um, I don't think any writer really, really writes about any place or any community to educate somebody else or to uh, highlight something. I think your natural affections will show through and um, the reader will feel that connection. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, uh, I think a lot of participants who here would like to have, uh, uh, you know, get a little of, uh, tips, something uh, which will help them as a writer or to start writing per se, or probably writing as a career. So why do it be good if you offer us some tips with? Uh, I think the very first thing, especially young people should know that it, this is a very hard journey. Yeah. Uh, it's a very hard journey. It's a very uncertain journey. Uh, on um, on two levels, at two levels. Uh, one is that um, if you if you need to sustain yourself, this is going to be, this is a very practical consideration, but I'm coming to it first, uh, to, uh, especially for younger people are listening. If you need this to sustain your family, if you need this as a source of your livelihood, um, you'll have to think very carefully because it's a very uncertain field. Uh, it's not necessary that you will be published. You may work for years on a novel and you may find at the end of it that, uh, that particular novel is not even published. No publisher accepts it. And then you have to keep it in, put it into a drawer and go on to your next novel, onto your next project. Even if you sell, even if you get published and you, uh, you sell, the numbers are such in certain kinds of fiction in India, uh, the kind of fiction I write, literary fiction, the numbers are not enough to sustain a livelihood really. There are many segments in publishing which can um, uh, help you um, on a livelihood, if you write popular fiction, if you write genre fiction, such as let's say mythology, crime, there, there are other sections that you can probably make a comfortable living off, but not in literary fiction, not in the kind of fiction I write. So that is the first consideration. So you have to think very carefully before you set foot uh, into, this, um, into this line. Secondly, is that it is a very hard task. You know, this is not like a, a nine to five job where your work is detailed, uh, there's a structure, you let's say uh, go into an office, you know what you have to do, you, your day ends uh, constructively. Uh, this is not like that. There may be days where you can't write anything. There may be months you write a lot. Uh, there may be days that no idea makes sense. And you have to be a very self-motivated, very determined, um, very optimistic person if you want to set out on this path. And um, understand that uh, Nobody can really help you here. If that idea of the book doesn't take uh, shape, if that idea of uh, short story doesn't come to you, there's really nobody who can help you. So it's 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 somewhere where you have to be uh, very, uh, I think, um, self-aware, self-determined, um, and self-motivated if you want to set out on this journey. So it's not an easy journey. So for a start, you should understand that. Having understood that, um, what are the things you you've decided you want to be a writer? What are the things you need to look at? Number one is that you need to read. I think uh, a good writer is always first a good reader. I'm, I'm still a reader before I'm a writer, I think. We, we read uh, along the journey. You need to read from an early age. You need to read every possible kind of writing. Um, everything. If I do. Just a second. Uh, I request our participants to bear with us. Uh, Baidu's internet seems to be a, a disconnected. She will rejoin us very soon. Please stay with us.
বাইরু So I think I was just talking about uh, what to do as you start writing. So one is to decide you want to be a writer, knowing all the difficulties. Uh, second is to read very widely. And the third is um, to know yourself as a person. To um, It's not enough to be a good reader. It's not enough to know good language. It's not enough to uh, be able to write very good English or Assamese or whatever language you're writing in. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, you're going to be read if you have something to say. And uh, to have that voice, you need to build, uh, you need to cultivate your own self-awareness. You need to really know yourself as a person, um, what are your likes and dislikes, what do you stand for? How do you engage with yourself, with your family, with your society, with your roots, with your history, with politics, with films, with music, with almost everything under the sun. And once you find you have a voice, it is that voice that people are waiting to read. So it's not enough just to be a good reader, to be a good student of English, to be a good student of English literature, it's that you have to, it's like any great artist, right? It's like any great filmmaker. Uh, only when they have something to say, something connects with us, is when we start looking at them and we start watching their films, we start reading their books. So um, grow yourself and know yourself before you, find a voice, I think, before you begin writing. I don't know if this makes any sense. I hope it's making some sense to young people. Yes, I yes. Yeah, but uh, I guess, uh, I think in what, uh, I, the participants would like to know in what ways do you think uh, we should approach the publishing industry, especially in India? Like it's obviously it's going to be the first step towards uh, being a writer. So how to get your stories and uh, fiction or poetry, anything published. So a little overview about that. Uh, it's, it's not an easy journey. It's not an easy journey. And um, I think when you set out, you have to understand that um, you'll have, it, it may be a, um, a journey where you take small steps at a time. I would always advise a young writer is that uh, before you approach the big publishers, before you um, uh, submit your manuscript to someone like uh, Harper Collins or a Penguin Random House, um, I think what you could try and do is um, start publishing um, uh, in, in maybe smaller spaces. Find journals, find magazines, find uh, smaller publishers, put out your poetry, put out your short stories, see if you can get published somewhere. So when you approach a big publisher with um, a bigger manuscript, with a big novel, uh, you have a body of work, published work behind you. So that that definitely is one way. And of course, um, today uh, in India, we have, we have, we have literary agents. Um, in the West, they always had them. Now we have uh, quite a few agents here. Uh, you could always seek their help. You could always um, approach an agent and see if they could um, take your novel to that next level, to the level of being published. Um, it's... Um, a slow process, so have a lot of patience and uh, keep working harder, keep building your publishing body of work before you um, look to that big novel. Uh, yeah. I think if you follow uh, those small little uh, steps, it'll probably be easier for you. Okay. Uh, Baita, there's a question that has come in. Uh, the participant wants to know how to deal with a writer's block. The writer's block. Um, it's a very individual thing. Um, I don't think I've ever really faced a very bad writer's block. But uh, um, from what I hear, what I talk with my fellow writers, uh, possibly a good thing is to leave your work, what, you, what you're struggling with at that moment for some time, and um, just do something else, do something totally different, read a book, watch a film, take a trip, you know, do something else and come back to it. And in the process of living life, in the process of uh, reading something, watching a film, um, some button may get triggered. You may, you may find there's something um, regarding your work is, is flowing. Okay, but there is another question uh, where uh, the participant wants to know where do you get the ideas for your books? I mean, it's completely based on experience or is it from uh, some other source? I think any fiction um, by definition has to be a product of your imagination, right? So, um, but yes, the life you've lived, your life experiences, the people you've met, uh, definitely trigger some thoughts, some ideas, and um, which you put together, which you um, imagine and weave into a story which becomes a credible piece of fiction. So similarly for me, it's um, a whole lot of hard work, a whole lot of imagination, and uh, of course, inspired by many things in life around me. 
Okay, if I do uh, another question that has come in. Uh, that academic writing is overtaken by professional writing. If so, uh, do you think that in professional writing, contemporary issues are presented in a very biased manner? I'm not in academia, so I, I don't know if I'll be fully able to answer this question. I'm um, um, a very accidental writer. I'm a doctor turned writer who uh, uh, I deal with fiction, contemporary fiction and in my field. I can speak for contemporary um, Indian fiction. Contemporary matters are very much at the core of many stories. If you look at um, any of the uh, books out published today, you find they deal with all the issues that um, contemporary modern India is dealing with. So um, I can only speak as far as um, fiction is concerned. Professional writing, I um, I don't think I'll be able to really comment on that. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of questions that have poured in. There's one called, what's your view on language selection for the beginner? Should they write on their mother tongue or the language in which they have command or go for the prestigious language like English? Number one, I don't think prestige should be an issue when you're selecting your, your language to write in. Um, the way to go, I think, would be to write in the language you have most command over because eventually language is just a tool. Uh, what you have to do, uh, you can use that tool to express what you have to say. And if you, whichever language you're comfortable in, and whichever you're good at, um, just go for that and write in that. Um, I think prestige is the last thing you should look at um, when you're selecting a language to write. Okay. Um, and there's another, uh, what are the factors that influence you to pursue writing? Like you give over medicine. What are the factors that influence you to go for this passion that is writing? Uh, okay, well, good question. I, um, I uh, never planned to write. I, I trained uh, in medicine. I trained as a doctor. Uh, like I was saying in the beginning of the uh, conversation when I was um, talking about my journey, I took a little time off to start a family. And uh, when my young son was born, he wasn't well. So I had to spend a, a long period at home taking care of him. A long period meaning almost four years I had to spend at home. And in that process, while I was at home, I began reading, I began writing. And um, somehow writing became the, the main profession. I never went back into medicine. So okay. that, I think, was what pushed me into publishing. Okay. Uh, Baidu, can you suggest a few good Indian uh, writers, especially from the Northeast? Uh, uh, to read? Books to read? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's so many. From the Northeast, it's, it's a pleasure. There, there are so many beautiful books you can read. There's um, Mamandai and her books. You want lyrical, beautiful, poetic writing. There's uh, Tropa Hazarika uh, to read his um, beautiful, bold um, uh, language, beautiful fiction. There's uh, Anjum Hassan from Shillong. There's Mitra Pukon. There's uh, Ankush Saikya if you want, um, you know, crime fiction. Uh, Noir, he writes beautifully. There are many, many writers in the Northeast you can look at. And, um, and many other Indian writers you can look at too in today's contemporary space. Uh, I think uh, Oji Suma sir would also like to uh... Uh, put out a question for you, Ojit, sir. Uh, yeah. Hello? Yes, sir, your video is uh, off. Hello. Did sir, you are audible. Yes. Uh, Mom, I want to know uh, something uh, about the suffering and uh, the conflict that... Uh, hello? Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, Mom, I want to know about the, the suffering and conflict uh, that the uh, protagonist of the rebirth uh, suffered. Is it typical for every woman that uh, want to settle in a different environment? Um, in rebirth, Kaberi faced certain challenges in her marriage. Mm -hmm. It was an arranged marriage. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, obviously, once she came to live with her husband in Bangalore, she realized that possibly he was not as committed as she was to the marriage. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that um, the suffering that she went through post that, I think um, is fairly typical of what uh, a young woman would go through when she realizes that in her marriage. Uh, what I think um, was different about Kaberi's reactions was that um, despite being a quiet kind of personality, she had quite a strong will. She had this, um, she had the um, a determination to uh, see herself through this challenge. Uh, uh, so that, that journey where she discovers herself, she didn't think she was that strong, but where she discovers the inner strength within her uh, is, is um, what the story is about. Um, the suffering, yes, any woman in that situation 
typically feels the same suffering she went through how you deal with it is a very individual journey i think that is a common question that all writers face every day so uh, you almost had a similar kind of question but i think that is answered uh, there is another uh, what might be the prospects and challenges for today's women writers can it be taken as a lucrative career in present times ma'am no absolutely not i think i said so a little earlier right that uh, you cannot depend on literary fiction at least the kind of fiction i write the genre of literary fiction uh, to be a source of your livelihood it's a very uncertain means of livelihood so do not look at it as something which can be lucrative um there are other segments there's as mythology there's crime fiction there's other genre fiction which non fiction non fiction could possibly be uh, uh earn you enough to live by i don't think it can be lucrative but um certainly not my kind of fiction so please um before you take the step into fiction think about that clearly uh, the other part of the question sorry the same what did she say what might be the prospects and challenges for today's women writers i think women writers even today and um, like women in all other fields um face the challenge of the fact that you have to um focus your energies on the house and the career um the sad thing is even today even in today's uh, modern times uh, women um, are definitely encouraged are supported to go out and work yet they have to um still look at things at home right so um that that equal distribution of of uh, of the family responsibility i think still hasn't happened between men and women yet in our country it's happening in 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 many pockets it definitely is happening more than before but the point is you have to still um, you are still fractured you still split between your duties towards home and your duties towards work for writers especially um, and this is not just for women writers for writers another problem we face very often is that it's not even looked at as a serious profession i mean if you're a doctor or an architect or even a teacher that is respected as a serious profession you go out you you 9 to 5 you're outside you come back so people give you time and space for that sometimes writers are looked at um, as not even uh, pursuing a serious career and um, i face this often at home it's like but you're not doing anything much why can't you come out for a coffee uh, why can't you go for that wedding but i have to finish a chapter but it's only a chapter come for the wedding do the chapter later but the point is um writing my chapter is as important as perhaps um somebody finishing a, a particular project uh, in an office right but the problem with all writers faces that we uh, first of all have to even um, be taken seriously as the fact that this is a serious piece of work uh, there's another question uh, so can we know that uh, so can we know which profession does give you more pleasure um the choices being as in being medicine and writing both they both have i mean um, there is no uh, profession i think as satisfying um, as being a doctor honestly it's um, it's 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 one of those professions which is more like um, a vocation really you can't really count it as a profession i mean you you give your heart and soul in your life to that work so you can't really compare the two uh, but writing in its own way uh, is a very very satisfying journey because um, it's also um, i think essential in in, in, in human civilization because um all of your teachers of literature your students of literature and we know the very important place and don't don't be fooled literature has a very important place in our lives um it it um, if if things like medicine or being a lawyer gives us um you know other nuts and bolts of our daily life something like um, a, a writer or a filmmaker or a painter gives us that uh, you know the um the the soul the soul of our life really Uh, we 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 contribute to the soul of human living and it's equally important so this is an equally satisfying journey when you uh, connect with people who read you okay and there's another what are the common traps for aspiring writers i think um going back to what i said earlier if you don't think it through if you look at it as a profession if you look at it just to earn money and if you don't um work hard enough really to put something serious and credible out there um readers are very discerning so if you have to attract them just for the sake of it something which without a thinking or a soul or uh, any intent behind it uh, they will see it so uh, do not do that take your work seriously this is as serious a profession as as anything else really yeah then there's another uh... can you also talk about the representation of northeastern writers in mainstream indian context 
missed the beginning of the first part. Uh, can you also talk about the representation of Northeastern writers in the in mainstream Indian context? We have a um, fairly robust uh, number of, um, very large number of um, writers from the Northeast. And um, I'm talking about writing in English. And um, they have done well in the Indian context. They have done well um, in the mainstream. They have... Um, been published, they have been read, they have been loved, their works are discussed, um, they're well respected. So I think uh, um, we may be a, uh, in numbers not as large, obviously being a smaller region, but I think we've done well. I think we've been able to, uh, to make an impression on the reading public. Uh, are there any more questions? Uh, what is your next book idea? I haven't thought yet. I, I take my time between books and uh, Undertow has just come out this year. And um, even the journey after a book comes out for a writer is uh, kind of a very involved one. You are uh, holding the book's hand as it were to, uh, as it takes its first steps in the world. And uh, I'm still, I think, involved in that stage and haven't really thought the next book yet. And there's another, how many drafts do you go through finally publishing it? that's very different for every book um, for next door every story um, took its own time and since I wasn't looking to publish I took a long time polishing crafting rebirth actually I wrote um, practically first draft I think just one draft whereas undertow I think I made many many drafts uh, because I was trying to balance the two protagonists uh, voice in the story so um, I think it depends on what book you choose what book you have at hand I don't have any particular uh, a consistent number, really. Okay. Uh, Ojit sir, would Ojit sir like to put out a question? Shall Sarma sir? Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, hello. Uh. You're audible, sir. Uh, Ma'am, uh, in, in your next door, uh, we have seen uh, 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 you are dealing with uh, emotions, human relationship, and even insurgency problems in the, uh, the state, if you talk about the Northeast. So uh, how do you see all these opposite factors uh, that are actually uh, uh, in conflict, uh, uh, conflict and uh, how uh, uh, as a writer, uh, we have gone to uh, uh, develop uh, develop these stories uh, uh, there in your uh, book. It wasn't very clear, but from what I understand, you're asking, uh, how do I deal with opposite sides in a conflict? Is that the yes. question? Yes. Did I hear mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yes. So, yes. Uh, yes. I, thank you for the question. It's a very good question. I think what a writer does is um, steps back and looks at both sides mm. of a conflict. Uh, mm. For example, uh, I have this beautiful example um, in Aruni Kashyap's um, anthology. There's an anthology called um, How to Tell the Story of an Insurgency, in which I have a short story called um, The Vigil. The Vigil is about a mother who has two sons. One son is um, with the insurgents and the other son is a police officer. But she's in, in the middle. And how does she deal with it? She's stuck between the two sons. And I think for a writer, we tend to step back and take that position where we see both sides and um, try to present both points of view to the reader. Ultimately, the reader decides what he, tried, he takes away from the text. So in Next Door 2, um, you will see I have presented both, when there is a question of a conflict, um, I try and present both sides. And in Undertow especially, I've been uh, discussing that, that I have um, two people in locked in a conflict, a grandfather, the Kaka, and the daughter, granddaughter lawyer. Mm -hmm. And um, it took me many, many drafts to present both points of view fairly, equally, so that the reader could read both sides and come to their own conclusion. So um, a writer steps back and looks at both sides and tries to present both sides in writing a conflict. Uh, Ma'am, there's another. Uh, can we talk about your failing experience as a writer? Uh, I think it's... Mm -hmm. Your experience as a writer. 
I think that is striking. Nan has already talked a lot about that. Yes, I think that's yeah. the journey, yes. Yeah. Then there is another, uh, are there certain expectations from writers of the Northeast, like projecting insurgency and uh, reality as it is, or concentrate more on uh, the natural surroundings and other uh, aspects? Um, good question. I think um, there could be, there could be an expectation from writers of the Northeast to um, write insurgency, to write um, maybe other themes like natural beauty. Uh, personally, I haven't come up, come up with, uh, come up against this. I've never had a publisher tell me that why don't you write about insurgency? Why don't you write about um, floods? So you know, um, what I do is um, I write um, more about uh, human relationships. My books, my stories come from more within our house, from within our family, and um, I write like like you asked me the question. Why did you, um, um, for example, in Andhra, the the early years when the agitation was going on, Rukmini's story is set on the stage of the Assam agitation because by the timelines, um, those were the years of the agitation. So um, I write the, uh, the political and the natural landscape as much as it's needed to support the story, the human stories. So I um, haven't felt pressure and I've um, not been under any pressure to write any of those themes. Okay. But I, I do see where you're coming from. I do possibly, maybe some writers have had uh, to explain why you don't write insurgency. Why don't you write about the natural themes, you know, because, um, Maybe yes, maybe some publishers do look at the Northeast in a stereotypical fashion, but I personally haven't had that experience, no. Okay, uh, so there's another, would you, the participants would also like to know about the prospect of translated works, uh, ASME's works into English. Uh, do you do any translations or? I don't do translations myself, but uh, translated works are doing very well. Um, if you look at uh, in the last few years, Translations from Assamese to English have done very well. The, the, it's, it's, it's read a lot. Uh, in the same um, anthology I was talking about, which was edited by Arun he's has he has um, the stories from written in English originally, three or four, four of them. He has stories translated from Ohomia uh, into English and from Bodo into English also. So translations uh, definitely do well and people are eager to know what is from a particular region. I mean, we would be eager to write as, uh, as readers to know Kashmiri literature or... Uh, uh, Malayalam literature, it's, it's such a blessing to have translations that we can access. So translations will uh, are doing well and will do well in the future. Okay. Uh, I don't think there are any more questions. Uh, okay. There's one more. Uh, I think this will be the last one. Or oh, I, I guess there's two more. Okay. This one, uh, called, where do you get the ideas for your books? Uh, are they especially from, uh, from interpersonal relationship or from other issues? I've answered that before in a different way in that um, the ideas are mostly from the imagination. Um, you put together, a writer put, never never writes literally from his or her own life or experience, but uh, as, we, as we travel along the journey of life, we, we see things, we gain insights into human nature and all those experiences definitely um, play, feed into our creating um, an, a piece of work, a piece of fiction. So um, yes, from imagination largely, from life around you sometimes, that's how you come up with the story. Okay, there's a long one. Uh, is the art of writing an inborn quality or it can be acquired by anyone who is in the field of academic endeavors? What might be the primary qualities that a genuine writer needs to have? Kindly reflect on the linguistic aspects of a composition to be focused on as well. I do think that eventually um, creative activities like writing, painting, uh, filmmaking um, is actually inborn. You can, um, there has to be something inside you, which uh, what I was calling the voice earlier, which um, you can cultivate, but it has to be there somewhere within you, that spark. Uh, that is not something you can acquire, or you can learn in a classroom. What you can learn um, are the technical aspects. You can learn how to paint well, you can learn language, you can learn, um, you can even do nowadays degrees in creative writing to teach you how to write a novel or a short story. Um, but essentially, yes, there has to be something within you uh, to really become a creative person, not just writing. To, you know, I, I would actually extrapolate to any creative activity. Okay, and there's the second part of que uh, the question is, kindly reflect on the linguistic aspects of a composition to be focused on. Well, um, I think that goes without saying that um, uh, the craft or the language 
has to be a really high quality for you to be able to succeed as a writer. So it goes without saying that you have to pay attention to your language, you have to pay attention to your craft. Um, all that has to come together with your creative thought, with your imagination to really make it a credible piece of fiction. Okay. Um, and there's a question, it isn't very clear, but I think uh, the participant would like to know uh, why is the condition of English in our society not as good as expected? Uh, condition of English meaning in the sense of... Um, the language. I think a lot of people, you know, face quality of the quality of English, the quality of language. Yes, um, I think um, possibly because um, access to teaching. I think you'll have to um, have access to being taught English at a young age to be able to come up uh, to speed, to be able to come up to a certain level required. So um, the better you have access to quality teaching, is better you can come to better language um, quality. And if you don't have access to that in the reverse is, is where it suffers. So I think possibly that lack of access. There's another, uh, what's your view on feminism, ma'am? Do you think more, uh, more writings on feminism can help to control the situation in India as good write-up can also change people's mind? Um, to some extent, to some extent, yes, but um, to change the correct the current um, societal problems we're facing, what we see in the news every day, uh, I think it goes beyond writing, really. I don't think just by writing you can change that. For that, I think um, educating, educating our children, educating people from a very young age um, is really the way to go, is the only way out. Okay. Um, and by educating, I don't mean uh, degrees, I don't mean formal education in the school, but by educating people to be better human beings, to have more empathy with each other, to, um, to um, be better human beings, I think that that possibly is the way out. I think uh, we've finished an hour. Uh, I think if in, by any chance, if any more questions pour in, we can put out to Baidu, but I think uh, that's about it. We have uh, almost, you know, answered all your questions. Uh, Ojit sir, would you like to say something? No. Yes, sir. Uh -oh. Hello, sir. Um, you say there is a hello. Yeah, yes, sir. Um, you, uh, see in the first form, there is a question you probably skipped. Uh, somebody asked you, uh -huh. somebody, uh, some, uh, someone asked a question, how am I inspiring to writers? Please tell us about your feelings of writers, ma'am. This question uh, has not been answered, probably. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, the question probably is, uh, uh -huh. What is your experience as a writer? I mean, uh, whether it's not very clear though. Your feelings and I think everyday life experiences as a writer, you know, meeting other writers or exactly something. It's like a very, um, it's a, we don't meet that often. So um, uh, writing is a very solitary occupation. Um, so it's a very solitary experience wherein sometimes you, um, just stuck to your writing for months. You don't really meet other writers. Um, otherwise, uh, day to day lives are like anybody else, except it's more interior. And we spend a lot of time on our own. We spend a lot of time at our laptops writing. It's, it's not um, an organized, it's not a social activity like uh, some other professions are. So, which is why I said in the beginning, right? Um, when I said you have to be very self motivated, you have to be determined because when you have only yourself to motivate yourself, uh, nobody can help you with your writing. So um, it's, it's, it's quite a um, sometimes hard and exhausting journey. By the way, there are a few more questions open to answering them. Two more That's questions. fine, yes. We can take some more. Yeah. What are the most important issues for writers, uh, important magazines for writers to subscribe to? Uh, unfortunately for English, uh, writing in English, uh, I'm not sure how many magazines there are today. I'm not very well versed. Uh, I do know that online, um, nowadays everything is online, right? So there are a couple, there are good magazines you can subscribe to online. You can, in fact, don't even have to subscribe. There's, uh, for example, for short, for short fiction, there's a magazine called Out of Print, which brings out um, very interesting, very good um, short stories um, every now and then. You can look that up. Um, 
there are academic journals, but there are really no uh, popular magazines, not like before. Uh, when we were growing up, we used to have, I don't know if you remember, um, things like the Illustrated Weekly, Imprint, we used to have magazines which brought out short fiction, uh, even Femina, but uh, now uh, there really aren't too many places where you can read uh, published fiction. So that, that's a gap in English writing, but I do know that in Ahomya and even here in vernacular languages in, in Bangla, in Canada, there are lots of uh, magazines and journals you can access for fiction. And there's another. Ma'am, you have enough opportunity to treat the patients, those who need psychological and mental support. Do you have any plan to incorporate such support issues in your writing in near future? Um, I have very little time for my um, fiction writing to write my novels and my short fiction. So um, no, right now I don't think I have, but would definitely love to uh, in the future sometime when there's more time. Okay. So uh, I think this is this is it. Uh, I think we won't be taking any more questions. Uh, Baidu, uh, you know, there's still more, I guess. Oh, okay, no, I think it's okay. Uh, I think for some technical issues, uh, the head of the department, Muslim Islam sir, could not join us. So I would like to thank on behalf of the English department, Baidu, for uh, bearing with us and uh, for taking so many questions. This is more like a question, you know, very interactive. I think we really enjoyed it. And I would like to thank all the participants. The feedback link is provided in the chat box, both in YouTube and in the, the Zoom box. And uh, I think that's about it, Baidu. Uh, we would take, like to take a picture, just a picture. Yeah. Participants can uh, click on the feedback link and uh, they can leave the meeting. In the meantime, uh, I'll just take a picture, Baidu. I do, uh, I do can leave now, I guess. Yes, and thank you so much. Thank, thank you to everybody at Dean College, to Hazarika sir, to Shojit Kharma, and to you, Umeta Sin, for being such a lovely coordinator. And thank you for everybody joining. And I hope I answered everybody's questions. And uh, if any of you out there want to be writers, all the very best. Good luck with your writing journey. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Baidu.